Well, Jim, before we move completely off the topic of Ariel Hawani and Tony Khan, and again, this has been a big issue this week, it was propelled a little further by Ariel Hawani speaking about it at a later date, and I'm not sure what that date was on his program. Let's go to this clip. We'll stop it maybe a couple times, get your thoughts. But here's Ariel Hawani talking about his Tony Khan interview. Tony Khan interview. Did this interview with Tony Khan last Tuesday. It aired Wednesday night. It was for the YouTube channel. You can check it out. Uh, I, 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 look, whatever I'm going to say here is going to piss off the, uh, the AEW supermarks. But I'll just say this. One of the most frustrating and to a degree not so fun interviews of my career because, as you may have seen, he didn't want to answer anything. Now, look, like you're going to come on and promote X, Y, and Z. Great. And I'll play that dance with you. And I did at the beginning. But you got to give us something to not even <laughs> tell me like how you were feeling. I'm not asking for specifics on, all right, fine, I asked. Is, is Punk going to wrestle for you? Is he coming back? You don't want to get into it? Fine. But just tell me how you were feeling. Give me something. MJF contract. Hey, uh, you know, I don't do business in the public, but I'll tell you, love having him on board. Look forward to many years together. But give me something. Don't just say not going to talk about it, not going to talk about it, doesn't serve me, doesn't serve me. That's not the way you do it. If you want to be the voice, if you want to be the face, there's a way to do that dance. Look at Eddie. Look at Dana back in the day. L look at some of the great promoters over the last 30 years. There's a way of giving us the answer, even though it's not the answer I want, but you're giving us some sort of answer, something to chew on, as opposed to just shutting it all down. Let me stop it there for a second. He's, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And he's very perceptive. Yeah. And he's been doing this for a while. But, you know, when you Tony is he was vaccinated with a phonograph needle. He never wants to shut up at his media scrum or at his interviews that he controls. But when somebody's asking him questions that he's not quick enough to come up with a bullshit answer for it, he doesn't want to give the real one. Then he just shuts down. And in that case, that's not a person that ought to be doing the interviews speaking for your company not very enjoyable and, and if i'm being honest like right off the bat i was like oh i think you didn't like me back in the day because he turned down multiple interviews with me and then we get right into the mjf thing and like really deep into the weeds on the pr stuff and i was like golly this is how we're starting all right i just you know took a shot at bt the itv stuff should have went back at him and reminded him two minutes ago that he you know was fawning over warner brothers discovery about being the greatest place for AW. Meanwhile, BT is owned by Warner Brothers Discovery, and yet he's telling me that ITV is a better place than BT. <laughs> like, just these things that were... I'm not exactly sure everything he just said, but... <laughs> but it, it sounds like a conflict of interest, doesn't it? It certainly does. For, um, you know, discrepancy. He says he never met Nick Khan, then he says he talked to him on the phone. I was like, what are we doing here? Well, like, well, what is this? And you're not going to give me one legit answer. I appreciated meeting him. I, I enjoy it. But like the enjoyment of getting to talk to the, the guy who founded this great property that has done a lot of great things in three years fizzled out rather quickly when I realized the only answers he's going to give me are these long drawn out answers uh, promoting all this stuff and going on these <laughs> tangents about Chris Jericho and this and that when, you know, we got a tight window and I kept mentioning the tight window because they told me there was a tight window and I can't get to the, any of the stuff. And then when I get to the stuff, you don't want to answer any of them. I won't get into this. I won't get it. MJF, uh, the punk stuff, the young buck stuff. Ask him about Bray Wyatt. Uh, ask him about, uh, what else did I ask him about? Uh, MJF, Punk, Young Bucks. There was another one that I asked him about later on. Oh, Cody Rhodes. What do you mean to say? Like, what, how did you feel seeing him there? I'm not going to get into that. That's not going to serve me. Like, man, I'm not asking you for the financial breakdown. I'm just asking for your feelings. Yeah, you know, you know, it was tough. Uh, you know, we had been through the wars together. We went uh, in the trenches together. I'm happy for him. We're in a good spot. Maybe we'll do business in the future. You I just wish him said the best, what I just said. Yeah. There's a simple way to handle this that Tony doesn't grasp. That's everyone sees it but him. Just on our roster right now. Something. Give me something, for goodness <laughs> sakes. Uh, I, my feeling on that interview in short was, this is me just shooting right here. I feel like Tony Khan doesn't trust me. I feel like he doesn't really like me. And I feel wow. like he came in there with his guard super up and didn't want to give me any sort of morsel because he thought that if he opened the door a little bit, I would walk in and ask X, Y, and Z. And I tried to tell his people like, yo, 
I have no allegiances to anyone. So I work for the British broadcaster of WWE. So what? When I worked for ESPN, I had Bellator guys and 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 uh, one guys on and whatever guy Cage Warriors got. It, that's what do you think I'm going to do? Well, let's stop it here. So I guess he's going into the idea that he believes that Tony Khan had his guard up, as he put it, because of we talked about before any potential conflict of interest. The idea that Ariel Hawani works for a WWE partner or a network, I guess. Oh, but like there was going to be a big gotcha moment where suddenly it was going to be like the closing scene and Perry Mason and Tony was going to open his mouth and admit to some crime and get hauled off or whatever. It's a goddamn interview on a, on a podcast or on a YouTube channel. Um, I don't think Tony had to worry about being kidnapped, tied up, taken away, or held for ransom. Um... But he just, he, he, you can't shut him up when he's allowed to ramble about all of the rambly things that he likes to talk about. But when you, people ask him specific questions and want answers, then he, he, he's not that verbally nimble and he doesn't know what to say. And obviously this whole, I mean, it's not just about the media scrum and the investigation, although that whole thing is still far from settled, obviously, but he can't come up with a, platonic answer about anything about Cody whatever I, that then why do the interview he I guess he's used to talking to all of the the journalists that are kind of like journalist action figures that hang out around his shows where his real action figures have matches there's way too much of that out there I mean you brought up a Sports Illustrated earlier Sports Illustrated's not going to probe him like this this was someone trying to do a serious interview and just get something. Oh, yeah, well, I was, I was, but at least, it, my God, at least it's not variety, for fuck's sake, for wrestling news. Where am I going to find out about the latest fucking Adam Sandler comedy over on fucking Fox Sports? Maybe if it's a golf movie, but let's finish with Ariel Hawani here. <laughs> you, you think I'm going to come at him and hit him over the head with a steel chair? <laughs> so, I don't know. Didn't really enjoy it. Frustrating felt like he wasn't giving us anything. And then I felt like there were so many discrepancies and watch this be cut up and watch all the Mark. You know, my favorite thing about the crazy marks are they'll be like, oh, this is coming from, you know, uh, a guy who Nick Khan was his former agent. Every I know that voice he just did. I know whose voice it is that he just did. I know that voice. Every single time I talk about wrestling, I mentioned that, including in that interview, I mentioned it to him. Um, and they just, they love it. And you know what? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's AW in Toronto tonight. It's going to be great. My one regret was not asking about the 9,000 titles. Way too many titles in AW. <laughs> um, but here's the thing if you are saying right now with a straight face that the AW product is better than the WWE product, you're just a liar. You're just an absolute liar. There's, there's wow. no if, ands, or buts. The WWE wow. product is infinitely better, infinitely more interesting. Infinitely. And there's a freaking brawl happening backstage. Each and every week, it seems. Meanwhile, it's all kumbaya on the Stanford side of things. Like, if you're going to be a super fan, be a super fan, but also tell it like it is. Six months ago, wasn't the case. A year ago, when Punk came back, wasn't the case. When Brian signed, when Moxie came, all that stuff, wasn't the case. But right this second, if you're going to sit here and say that it's a better product, you're an absolute liar. Adriana. Boom goes Wow. With the announcement of UFC. Oh, wow. There it is. Ariel Hawani on uh, Tony Khan. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, he's he's infringing on our gimmick. I thought we were the ones to call old Tony on the carpet, put him on the edge of the rug, and chasing him suitably. But Ariel has just aired everything out. I mean, <laughs> he just went. He just did a promo at the end. He just yeah. went from here are my problems, and by the way, here's what I think of you. Yeah. It, well, and here's the if somebody. And I know people out there are going to, well, Ariel Hawani is a wrestling expert. I'm talking about legitimate, deep, decades-long wrestling knowledge. If if even somebody as briefly acquainted with the wrestling business as Ariel Hawani knows what's going on and can say that and can nail the, the problems or many of the problems with Tony... You know, well, and, and they probably know it in the company. They know it backstage. They know it in the locker room. They're just all getting paid a lot of money to be, you know, high-priced toys. And they don't want to say anything, except for the ones who are good enough at manipulation to get in Tony's ear 
and uh, swerve things around the way they want them to go. Yeah, he should have interviewed Jericho. Every answer he would have turned into something about himself. But when you think Either- about other executives like a Triple H or even a Bruce Pritchard, if they were doing an interview with someone like this, their non-answers wouldn't have been as you, not, not you abrupt, wouldn't you wouldn't what? have been able, able to tell that they didn't answer the question until you went back and listened to it a second time. Right. Because they would have took you on the ride to begin with and then and then segued you somewhere else. We've talked about the idea that Tony loves doing these interviews. And I only say that because he does so many interviews and he did it here with one of the biggest MMA journalists out there, Ariel Hawani. He's done it with small wrestling podcasters. He does it with everyone. In that way, he doesn't discriminate. It's actually kind of nice. But he talks to everyone. This is what happens. If you talk to everyone and you just want to be out there, but you don't have something to say, stop talking to people. Stop making sense, Brian. No, that was the JBL segment earlier. All right, we have come to a standstill here (laughs) on the show. (laughs) Here at the OK Corral, we'll see what happens.